tell you, Atlanta is not my favorite city. It's a very difficult city to drive around, even in a regular car. Not very van life friendly. Parking is ample, although you're limited to four hours between certain times and days. Um, but I got parking right outside the High Museum of Art, which looks pretty phenomenal. I'm going to skip the Botanical Garden. I will drive past it, but the CDC Museum is about 20 or 30 minutes from here. And that's really what I want to go to. Um, they also have CNN is based here. Um, I think I walked down Ted Turner Boulevard or something. There's a cafe. Um, thing is, I always forget to eat during the day. I eat uh, breakfast, usually a muscle milk and a banana and some yogurt. And then I'm so busy during the day and then I forget to like stop for lunch. So maybe I can find somewhere to eat after I go to the CDC Museum before I head to North Carolina. So there we go. Okay, let's check this out. And I only really like contemporary art, so <laughs> let's see what they have. So this museum is huge. There's like a regular real life going on. There's a summer camp for kids, <laughs> all this stuff. Are just like we're not used to like real life again uh anyway this reminds me a lot of the lacma in terms of size but we'll check it out got an hour and a half on my parking and then uh, oh there's a shop always looking for fun things for the van okay going on okay there are three buildings and they're connected by bridges or i think underground not a quiet museum there's a bunch of summer camps going on so <laughs> Uh, I have my not loud shoes on, um, but if you have loud shoes, it doesn't matter because it's very loud in here right now, which is fine. I guess they have like a children's area, more children's area, so like kids stuff. So I'm just going to go this way and figure out, um, they have maps, but I figured it's pretty intuitive. I mean, three buildings, a lot of art, so this is really cool. Great building. So I'm going through thinking I don't care for like the Renaissance art and stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh, there's Prudence. There's my girl <laughs> out in the street with her alarm going off every five minutes. Bus goes by, alarm goes off. Just kidding. There she is. That is the best thing that I've seen framed. Look at that. If that was a picture frame, it would be worth billions of dollars. Literally priceless. Move over, Mona Lisa. Picture of Prudence going in the Louvre right now. Yeah, growing up in the UK where everything was just old and freaking statuesque and dusty and all that. So I didn't really care much for this. When you see one statue, you've seen them all. Um, anyway, unless I see one in like an antique shop or, you know, thrift, thrift shop or something. And then I buy it and it's worth like zillions of dollars. Yeah, not really into portraits. They never really look like the person that they painted because... I don't know. I guess no cameras back then, right? Yeah. Anyway. Beautiful building. I think I'm more impressed by the building than I am about, like, the permanent exhibits. But it looks like there's mind-bending contemporary art on the third floor. So I'm going to head up there now. This is more my my type of art, the one that's like the mind bender that doesn't really make any sense, but you kind of have to make it make sense like this. Not sure how many arms and legs are in that one. This, not entirely sure what is painted under that or what is under that. Um, this LED strip, not sure, but I like this kind of stuff. So. What does this say? More than once I've awakened with tears running down my cheeks. I've had to think whether I was crying or whether I was involuntarily like drooling. Well, that happens all the time with me. Constantly drooling 
uncontrollably. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of interesting. You know, you kind of look at it and see different things. So what I really like about this kind of art is more about the um, way that it's made, not necessarily like what it's supposed to represent because I think that's interpretive. Um, I've actually seen this chair before. Don't know who that is. I've seen that sofa, I think in San Antonio. Um, but yeah, so like understanding how these were actually put together, um, especially things like metal works, like this wood that's carved out of, I think, one piece of wood. And now that I've built a van, <laughs> um, trying to understand how to put things together. And of course, you know, I'm the only person in this part of the museum because none of this makes any sense. This is kind of a cool bench. So if I had like a really cool container home or something that was super big, I would just fill it with stuff like this. There would be nowhere for anyone to actually sit. It would just literally be like these would be non-functioning drawers. No, you can't put anything in the drawer, even though there's like 15 of them. Chairs that you can't sit on. Yeah, everything is art. <laughs> um, no, I kind of like it, you know. It's unique and different. And then down here, random stuff. So I think I'm gonna head out soon. Uh, I think the museum was free. They had a members line and a regular line, but I don't recall actually paying for anything to come in here. So if I ever come back to Atlanta, um, I won't come on a holiday weekend and I will definitely explore more. But this is pretty cool. Yeah, I need to learn how to weld, <laughs> mostly because I need to make a um, spare tire rack for the back of my van and maybe some art. So it just started raining, so I'm going to drive past the Botanical Garden up to the CDC Museum right now. About 15 minutes away. That was a really great museum. I wish I had a little bit more time to spend in it. Um, yeah, good, good workout if you just want to go inside on a rainy day and walk around for a couple miles. Okay, this is the Botanical Garden. Beautiful, beautiful neighborhood that I just drove through people that have far more money than I have. Um, origami in the garden, that looks fun and interesting. Actually, I got to speak Japanese to some people at the Coca-Cola Museum. Uh, these three ladies were like asking me um, uh, to take their photo and then they said arigato and I said, oh, I speak Japanese. So, all right, so I'm just gonna pop in for a second and then turn around and leave. So yeah, too wet, rainy, humid, and gross to be walking around outside right now, even though rain is my favorite weather. I do want to get to, um, oh, that's pretty, that's a little flower over there. Um, I do want to get to my campsite, as I said, I think I've got three hour drive to North Carolina. Um, so yeah, so, <laughs> oh, there's a gate, that's fun. All right, I'm gonna turn around. Okay, the first 30 minutes at the Botanical Garden is free, which is great, because I had to do a 117 point turn at the entrance to turn around and come back out. Okay, next stop, of course, you know, the sun's gonna come out in two minutes, but next stop now. So my next stop is the CDC Museum, since so the Centers of Disease Control are here in Atlanta. Just checking to make sure there's not another pandemic I missed out on while I was doing van life and off the grid. Um, they're pretty thorough in their check-in. They've got clipboards and security guards, yellow vests, one guy is leaning. You know it's like super secure when like one guy is leaning. Like the supervisor guy is like, I'll just lean. What do they say in the army? You got time to lean, you got time to clean? <laughs> I don't think I want to say anything here. I'll probably get escorted off the premises. So best behavior and uh, yeah. My hair is nasty, nasty, humid hair right now. <laughs> I didn't catch any of that on camera, but they're not. Uh, I can't fit in the parking structure. They're not letting me park in this little parking lot over here. Um, so we'll see. They thoroughly check your entire vehicle. So don't have any like guns or drugs or anything, which I don't have any of that stuff. Don't have any alcohol. It's federal building. 
so we'll see. Oh, yeah. So he's gonna let me park where that shuttle is and they're just gonna let me park there all day. So if you're in a van, you might have to like talk to security about letting you park right here in the rain front and center. So pretty good. I know I will not fit under that thing. So he's gonna ask that driver to leave. They're so nice here at the CDC. <laughs> There's more of the CDC over there. You see that? I don't even know if I'm supposed to be filming. So that's why he just looked at me. <laughs> it's like a, literally a federal building. I'm getting goosebumps because they're like thoroughly checking vehicles. They had me open the back and then they go, oh, the Beatles sucks. I'm like, get out of my van. <laughs> so, just kidding. I'm like, what? I'm a Stones fan. Just kidding, that too. No Beatles. Beatles. Okay, I'm like super paranoid. So anyway, the entrance is over there and I'm like parked here. So I don't know if I'm allowed to film. I think I am. I'm not even in the museum yet. <laughs> My first stop is the typhoid room, which I actually have the typhoid vaccination, as you can see. This was me getting it before I went to Africa. And my fear is I never want to be patient zero. <laughs> so, not like this woman. Typhoid Mary. <laughs> What's funny is I actually worked on this movie and we were trying to figure out how to make the um, little billboards like this at the uh, bus stops uh, actually have bacteria inside. And this movie, if you watch it now, it's actually, even though it was like 11 years ago, was actually pretty accurate. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty crazy. But yeah, that was like, I think one of the last concepts or proposals that I worked on before my agency worked on this movie. So I did like websites and um, advertising and stuff like that um, for a whole bunch of different movies for like Disney and Paramount, Sony, DreamWorks, HBO, uh, VH1, a lot of reality shows. So yeah, pretty good movie. See, this is the most fascinating. I think there's like one person left in the world that is still living, I think in Dallas, in one of these. But to think like before they had the vaccine, which I've had the polio vaccine and I've had a booster right before I went to Africa in 2019. But could you imagine living in this thing like most of the time, if not all of the time? That is nuts. We don't have that now, why? Vaccines, people. <laughs> so this one is interesting um, for disease is the disease of violence. More people die from violence, which is 
uh, literally an, I don't know, epidemic? Epidemic. You know, we don't think about that, do we? More than 1.6 million people die from violence every year. That's 4,400 per month. No, 4,400 deaths each day. So after going through all that, they were like, don't worry. <laughs> it's like, I am terrified right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm, all I am right now is worry. Legionnaire's disease, Ebola, COVID. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to like cough or sneeze or breathe or like scratch my face. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do we have here? I learned something. Okay. This is interesting. I don't think they have a gift shop. I wanted to get like a plushie that was like shaped like COVID. Anyway, super interesting. Get your shots. <laughs> so I've been to 89 countries and I've had pretty much every vaccine you could possibly have. And I've never had any of the diseases that I have been vaccinated for. Well, that was terrifying, but I had prime parking. So now I think I'm done with Atlanta. I'm heading to the Smoky Mountains. So this will be another video pick this up later today in a different show so that was fun no no gory photos though i follow a pathologist on instagram called mrs and jimmy or and jemmy and uh her name's nicole and she's fascinating and i'm obsessed with like learning about just all of that stuff because when i travel you generally like see people with leprosy <laughs> walking up to you on the street begging for money and stuff um yeah, no, you see a lot of stuff going on in the world when you travel the world. Um, anyway, so I'm done, and I think I'm just going to get out of town. It's uh, Friday, 4th of July weekend. I do not want to be stuck in Atlanta traffic. So Atlanta is not a very van-friendly place. Not a lot of easy parking. Um, if you're in a bus, you probably wouldn't be able to navigate most of the roads. It took me through some really nice neighborhoods. But um, if you're in a van, it's fine. But if you're in, in anything bigger than... I guess a large Mercedes Sprinter because I figured like if Amazon trucks can get through then obviously the neighborhood's fine but anything bigger than that you're pretty much <laughs> SOL. All right it is muggy gloomy no sun and I'm gonna head out of here now.